First of all, what is interest rate implicit in the lease? There is a few of definitions. For example, IS 17 defines it as a discount rate that at the inception of the lease causes that the aggregate present value of minimum lease payments and unguaranteed residual value to be equal to the fair value of the leased asset and any initial direct cost of the lessor. Now let me clarify that a bit. Let's assume the very simple example without any complications arising from some initial direct costs and unguaranteed residual value. If you'd like to check on that, please watch our long video on IS 17. So let's say you want to buy a car that costs 10,000 euro in the regular car shop. But you don't have 10,000 euro in your pocket, so you decide to lease it. Under your lease conditions, you must pay 1,000 euro immediately when you take a car. Then, you will pay three annual installments of 3,500 euro each, starting after one year. You can easily calculate that in total, you'll pay 11,500 euro over the lease term of three years. Well, it's more than actual selling price of your dream car. Sure, because the lease is in fact a loan and you pay interest on it. So, those 11,500 euro can be split into the loan principal. This is the net amount you received in the beginning of the lease. And interest. And this is the difference between what you pay in total and what you received in the beginning. The interest is expressed in absolute number as a figure. 1,500 euro in your case. If we want to know the interest rate at which is your interest calculated, that's interest rate implicit in the lease we are looking for. In other words, if we discount all your payments by our interest rate implicit in the lease, we should get to original amount of loan than you took in the form of the lease. Fine. But how to calculate this interest rate implicit in the lease? Well, it's not so complicated when you realize that interest rate implicit in the lease is in fact certain internal rate of return of a series of receipts and payments arising from the lease. So to say, it is the rate at which net present value of all receipts and payments equals to zero. Let's take a look to numbers from our example. This table exactly describes the situation. In the first column, we have time or a year. The moment when you take a car is the time zero or it's now. The years one to three represent time after one year, two years or three years after beginning of the lease. Then the second column represents all receipts you get from the lease. It's 10,000 euro in the beginning, because you received a car with selling price of 10,000 under the lease. Then it's zero in the subsequent years, so your total receipts are 10,000 euro. In the third column there are all payments that you have to make under the lease. In the time zero, it's a down payment of 1,000 euro that you have to pay when you take a car. Then it's 3,500 at the end of each year 1 to 3. As you can clearly see, total payments under the lease are 11,500. Please note that all payments are with minus sign. That's very important for further calculations. The fourth column simply calculates net payments and receipts or net cash flows arising from the lease. So in the time zero, your net receipt is 9,000 euro. You received a car of 10,000 euro, but you paid back 1,000 immediately. We can say that the amount of loan you took is just 9,000 euro because you don't pay any interest in this payment of 1,000. So 9,000 euro is a loan principle that will accrue some interest. Then look to total net cash flows. It's minus 1,500 euro. You paid 1,500 euro more than you received, so that's the interest on the loan. At what interest rate? 
at internal rate of return of all about cash flows. But careful, you shall not include total of minus 1,500 euro as it's not separate payment or receipt. Assuming that you will use Excel or similar table processor for calculations, you will use simple formula IRR for arriving at the rate of 8.122%. This is our interest rate implicit in the lease. Let me show you the calculation in Excel sheet. 